Hey guys and welcome back to another episode of the data series. Today I hope to introduce you to machine learning, which can be thought of as the main tool that data scientists use to extract useful information from data. It's therefore essential that if you wish to become a competent data scientist, that you master this tool. So without further ado, let's begin. So what exactly is machine learning? The term machine learning was invented by Arthur Samuel in 1952 to refer to the idea of giving machines the ability to make decisions. The concept of machine learning took great inspiration from the human brain, more specifically from Donald Hebb's model of brain cell interaction. So the idea here is if we take a neuron, a neuron has many branches coming in and a single branch going out. And the idea here is if we get an input X, let's say it's your face, and your face has many features, for instance, your skin color, your face shape, your ear shape, your eye color, and so on and so forth. So the idea here is all of these features get inputted into the neuron or into the machine, and this gets processed in the nucleus, and then there is a final output Y. And let's say in this case, we wanna be able to identify if it's you or not. So the two outputs would be you, which is one, or not you, which is zero. And the analogy here is, if we take the general structure of a neuron, how it takes many inputs, or many like data values, and it processes it and there is an output, I can essentially be thought of as the process of machine learning. I'll be careful, however, by making analogies between machine learning and the human brain, as there is no concrete evidence to link both, but it helps to give a general idea of how machine learning works. One of my favorite definitions of machine learning is by Stanford University, which states that machine learning is the science of getting computers to act without being explicitly programmed. The way in which we make computers to act and make decisions without being explicitly programmed is through algorithms. Algorithms which can make decisions or predictions based on data. Therefore, to study machine learning is to study these algorithms. These algorithms are split into two categories. The first, supervised machine learning algorithms. Most practical machine learning algorithms in our era are supervised machine learning algorithms. These algorithms take a set of inputs X and map it onto an output Y. For those of you that are familiar with functions in mathematics, you can think of this algorithm as the function Y equals F of X. To make supervised machine learning algorithms a bit more intuitive, supervised means to observe and direct the work of some, someone or something. So a supervised machine learning algorithm simply observes and directs the inputs X to an output or outputs Y. Supervised learning algorithms can be further split into two groups depending on the output Y. If the output Y is a number, like the price of a house or someone's shoe size, this is called a regression problem. If the output Y is a group, is a group or category, like for instance an animal or a car or has a disease or does not have a disease, this is called a classification problem. Let's now go through an example of both a regression problem and a classification problem to make this idea more clear. For an example of a regression problem, let's say our algorithm wants to predict the price of a house in London based on various features of the house. So the output Y is the price of the house in London and the inputs X are the features of the house, which could be, for instance, the house size, the garden size, the distance to the shops or the number of bedrooms. Now, the job of our supervised machine learning algorithm is to use all of these features or inputs X to come up with a reasonable price for the house Y. So essentially, it's directing all of these inputs to an output, essentially directing all of these inputs X to an output Y. So you can sort of think, think of this as supervising the inputs to an output Y, hence the name supervised machine learning algorithms. Now let's take a look at classification problems. For an example of a classification problem, let us say our algorithm wants to determine whether someone is at risk of a heart attack based on their health data. The outputs Y in this case are is at risk or is not at risk. If you think back to the example of the neuron, that was also an example of a classification problem because we had the two outputs U or is not U. Essentially, we have two, two different groups, but it could be more like even three, four or five in which we want to categorize or classify our data into. Coming back to our example, the inputs X are the patient's health data, which could be blood pressure, cholesterol levels, 
calorie intake, amount of exercise, essentially all things which could possibly put this person at risk of a heart attack. Again, the job of our supervised machine learning algorithm is to use all of these features or inputs X to come up with a final output Y. However, the second to last output in this case will most likely be a percentage chance of the patient having a heart attack. From this, we can say that for instance, if the chance is bigger than 80%, the patient is at risk and we put into group one. And if, the, if it's less than 80%, then we can say that the person is not at risk, is not at risk and will be put into group zero. These two groups can be, will be considered our output Y. Details of how these algorithms work will be discussed in future episodes. Let's now take a look at a few examples of the most common supervised machine learning algorithms. For, for regression problems, we have linear regression and random forest. Linear regression is, is perhaps the most popular and is used to predict, for instance, house prices. And for classification problems, we have logistic regression, support vector machines, and neural networks. Neural networks are perhaps the most used algorithm of the current state of data science. So I plan to spend a lot of time covering this algorithm to make sure that you guys have a good grasp. Don't worry if you haven't heard of any of these algorithms before, we'll cover each one in great depth in future episodes where you can practice coding and applying them in real life examples. Let's now let, take a look at the second category of machine learning algorithms, which are unsupervised machine learning algorithms. Unsupervised machine learning algorithms take a set of inputs X, but there is no output Y, which is the key differentiating factor between unsupervised machine learning algorithms and supervised machine learning algorithms. That is, that there is no output Y that the X inputs are being observed and directed towards, hence the name unsupervised. Instead, the objective of unsupervised machine learning algorithms is to find any underlying structure or pattern within data to see if we can gain any useful insights. Unsupervised machine learning algorithms can be further split into two groups, depending on the algorithm's objective. These groups are clustering and association rule le learning. Let's take a look at these two. Let's take a look at a clustering problem. To do so, look at the following graph. Can you notice any structure within the data? Perhaps we can see that there are two groups, here and here. And let's label these groups group A and group B. An algorithm that is able to identify the structure and cluster the data into different groups is a classic example of a clustering algorithm. So that if a new data point is added to the graph, let's say here, the algorithm will be able to tell, does this point, does this data point most likely belong to group B or group A? Now, why is this useful? Let's say it was later found out that the majority of individuals of group A were girls and the majority of individuals in group B were boys. So if a new person joined the class with a weight of roughly 80 kilos and a height of 155 centimeters, the algorithm will be able to tell us if this person most likely belongs to group B, i.e. is a boy, or belongs to group A, i.e. is a girl. Notice that there is no distinct output of the algorithm. Instead, we add labels to the clusters that the algorithm is able to identify. How the algorithm is able to identify these, these groups or clusters will be explained in future episodes. Let's now take a look at association rule learning algorithms. These algorithms are often used in marketing. The algorithm predicts that, for example, if a person was to buy potato chips, or fries or whatever you call them, and salt, what are the chances that that person will also buy ketchup? Just to add some technical terminology here, the potato chips and the salt are called the antecedent and the ketchup is called the consequent. Now, the job of an association rule learning algorithm is to find if there is an association between the antecedent and the consequent. Here are a few examples of the most common unsupervised machine learning algorithms. For clustering problems, we have mean shift and k-means. And for association rule learning problems, we have what's called the a priori algorithm. Again, don't worry if you haven't heard of any of these algorithms before. We'll cover each one in a lot of depth in future episodes. So now hopefully you guys have a general idea of what machine learning is all about. I thought I'd just give you a few fields in which machine learning is applied to. Machine learning is often applied in medicine when it comes to, for instance, detecting particular cancer tumors, which can be very, which can be very helpful for doctors. It's also used in, in the financial sector, for instance, predicting future house prices. If you guys have a new smartphone or iPad, you may have the facial recognition feature. And this is a classic example of a machine learning application. Machine learning is also used a lot in, in voice recognition. And if you guys, if you guys have used Siri or Alexa before, machine learning is, is, is the framework behind those. 
also in self-driving cars. You know, it's not quite a Tesla, but but yes, machine learning is used is also is also used in, in autonomous driving, and perhaps a field which you guys aren't, and perhaps this field might be quite surprising, but machine learning is also is used also in a lot of sciences, biology, chemistry, but also in physics and cosmology, in helping in helping physicists and cosmologists to make new discoveries. So in summary. Machine learning is a science of getting computers to act without being explicitly programmed, as per the definition of Stanford University. And remember, machine learning algorithms can be split into two categories. Supervised machine learning algorithms, where you have a set of inputs X, which are mapped or supervised to an output Y based on past data. For instance, we looked at the regression problem when we were predicting the house price, and we also looked at the classification problem of identifying if if a person is at risk of having a heart disease or not. Just remember that all of these take data points X and these are mapped onto a data point Y or data points. And we also have the second category of unsupervised machine learning algorithms where there is no output Y. Instead, we have the data, we have the data structure X, for instance, in that clustering problem here. And we're essentially and essentially unsupervised machine learning algorithms just try to find structure within the data. So for instance, clusters, or perhaps you have a table of data and you want to find if there's any association between, between ketchup and salt, i.e. each time somebody buys ketchup, how often do they buy salt? So these are classic examples of unsupervised machine learning algorithms. So I hope you guys now have a little bit better understanding of machine learning and what it's all about. And if any of the concepts or the algorithms explained during this episode seemed a bit fuzzy or didn't quite or didn't quite click, don't worry. In future episodes, I'll be covering every algorithm mentioned in this video in a lot of detail, including coding and including examples. So I hope to see you there. Thank you.